Having felt Hakuho's supreme force for what he knew to be the final time, New Yokozuna Tedonofuji saw September as his duty to firm up the new sumo order with himself at the apex. What we got from him was an intense, purposeful first day ceremony and authoritative display to that effect, leaving challengers not so much trailing but actually searching for his tyre marks. Teru was grateful for this opening bout against a friend who, when facing him of late, has shown Gandhi-esque commitment to non-violent protest. Horshoryu proved his dislike with the use of actual tactics, but his obliquely attacking body was clamped, smothered and thrown with the coolness Teru demands of himself in unfavourable positions. Takonosho did immensely well to shrug off the initial inside right onslaught, but was also trapped in the clamp and dismissed. Before a deft shuffle and pull, then did for Hokuto Fuji. It was not until day five that Teru's sweat truly poured, with Kiribayama digging his head in low for long periods to ward off assault. But a poorly conceived left grip allowed Teru's chunky right to barge inside and help extend his perfect score against this man. Wakataka Kage tried an Onosho style up and under, but was shown why Teru is the division's best clamper. The Yokozuna home and dry wants his left foot stabilized. Flashes of strength and ingenuity aside, Kotonowaka posed no major problems on day seven. Before a sharp left press to the triceps broke the Tamawashi throat hold and cleared the path to the belt. The win taking Teru to 8 and 0 for the third meet straight. But a third perfect run to double figures was thwarted on day 9, as Mercurial Dai Eisho rediscovered his playbook from months before, keeping head and shoulder to the right to forestall the outside left then standing Teru up from down low before breaching the armpit. And when Tricky Uda tied him up on day 10, for the briefest of moments, we almost had a title contest. But this grab over the top left the crowd so certain of what was to come that they groaned in disappointment. And when erstwhile nemesis Takayasu was dispatched with a brutal shove on day 11, a fifth title seemed a formality. To some surprise, Meisei finally beat him from the inside on day 12, setting up potentially exciting showdowns with his three main title rivals in the home stretch. But Sumo Chiefs, who knew Hakuho was quitting, had their own different agenda and handed Teru his original fixtures against the three next highest men on the chart, all of whom were non-title contenders. His surge to glory was therefore inevitable, and he became only the fifth man post-war to crown his Yokozuna debut with the title. The 10 plus platitudes in his title interview, some of them repeated, reveal a man obsessed with presenting a different image to Hakuho, and one to curry favour with sumo masters assessing his fitness for elder stock. But one platitude was indeed highly accurate. On that dohyo in my condition, he said, anything could go wrong at any moment, so I have to make every second count. These seem the words of a man who sees Yokozuna as a 10 tournament job. But what do you think?